All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, Plumpton School Committee meeting. And what is it today? I even forget. See, that's how crazy it is. Uh, for Monday, June 25th, uh, this meeting is being recorded for cable cast and YouTube presentation by Area 58 Community Access Media. And the video is not considered to be an official public record. Uh, so with that out of the way, uh, we have uh, two visitors here with us, Ms. Clausen and Mrs. Rooney. So thank you for joining us. It will be riveting, I promise. Actually, I don't, but <laughs> it doesn't really matter. You're here and we're going with it. So there we go. Uh, next up, we have uh, minutes from May 21st. Uh, I was not in attendance at that meeting, so I would look to you three to let me know whether you had any additions or changes to that. Make a motion to accept the minutes from uh, May 21st. Do I have a second? Second. In favor? Aye. Okay, and I'm going to abstain. And did we have any correspondence? I didn't see any at the townhouse. I didn't know if anything else had come in. No, no? I didn't see anything. Okay. And then under new business, uh, annual report. Is that left over? No. That must be left over from a. Must mm -hmm. have missed that because we talked about that mm -hmm. prior meetings. Okay. Well, we did one. It's it's in the war. It's in the uh, annual report for the town and. It's, again, riveting reading, so <laughs> have at it. Um, have we heard, and then on the unfinished business, any any updates last time or that anyone's aware of about the driveway sign? There's no updates on the driveway sign. Okay. All right, so we should uh, look to get an update for our next meeting to see where that is. And then water treatment, um, we have a hole outside. We could definitely do. Another hole. They were here on Saturday. The company was here on Saturday. Uh, Atlas Construction was here. They basically have punched through the building so that whatever is going to be going, coming out, I'm essentially calling it a drain pipe, but it's more technical than that, um, to get the material from the building out into the drywall in the driveway. So right. that is all in, in the works right now. Okay. So the, I think I remember from other correspondence, you know, they should have, they have all the equipment. All the equipment has arrived I assume at this point and now it's a matter of just getting the plumber in to do install all that equipment I see they've cleaned out the the rooms cleaned out there and, and ready to go ready to go wow it's gonna feel kind of weird isn't it yeah. not to yes. have to talk about this yeah. at some point here Christine Healy and I are looking for yeah <laughs> it's on my whiteboard my, en my entire my entire time on the school committee we've been talking about this so. yes oh boy good uh Playground. So, um, last we spoke, um, I was charged with hiring potentially someone to come in and consult with us on playground design. Um, I've held back on that, trying to get a few more people interested and involved. But Nancy White from Playground uh, Inspections in New England is continuing to reach out to me. Um, she's done it several times, and I've told her just to give me a little time to put my pieces together. Um, Peter and I have asked Joe Dufour to come back in early July after we get through the holiday and Peter and I can match up our schedules to do another site visit to potentially give us more detailed plans than we did previously. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, we're not looking for further, further allocations of funds uh, to retain the at this point. Um, I also have a couple of names that I can give you after this um, with respect to a site engineer. Um, so, in I had some discussions with the project manager um, about if you didn't use a playground consultant, how would you put this together? Uh, and he said the two main pieces are the playground company to say figure out what it is you want, how big that's going to be, and what they need to be able to put it on. In other words, so what would hence the site and then having a site engineer who would come in and design the site for you and say, okay, well, you know, you're gonna need to take out this material and put in this material. This is what's gonna be left. You need X amount of this, Y amount of that. You're gonna need to change the, you know, the, the pathway down to it and so on and so forth and really do sort of, you know, create the site and then the playground company would come in and install on that site. Okay. That so when we spoke with Joe two years ago, he did mention some of that site work that would need to be done. 
like right. So we're and, starting to get a clearer vision. And what, of course, we need is we need um, a plan and numbers with that plan to be able to go to uh, the town uh, and ask for money, particularly in forms from a CPC perspective, or CPA perspective, to the Community Preservation Committee. And those would be the two major components. And, and speaking to that, Nancy White from the organization down the Cape I reached out to several months ago has worked with the Community Preservation Act before and has gone through the CPC hearing to present yep. ideas for playgrounds. So she's still a source that we could potentially reach out to, even if it's a a la carte type situation. Right. Um, and just on, on that note, um, you know, there's... Uh, there's, a bu there's some other stuff going on in town with respect to um, competition for uh, CPA funds, uh, particularly the land over on Prospect. There's going to be some work and some decisions made as to whether the town is going to pursue a right of first refusal for that and what that looks like. Um, that said, as part of those discussions with certain folks of the, of the um, it has been noted, at least with the chair of the CPC, that this is something that may come along too, noting that we would we have money to contribute to it, but that there would certainly need to be some decent funds from that. And another option, uh, of course, is if there isn't, the funds aren't there immediately, is that it could be bonded to through, C, through, CPC, through the CPA and with future CPC funds. So there's any number of options. We're just going to have to see sort of where we are when we get to the September, October time frame when this is due for submission. Um, but hopefully we can, over the summer, move this along to get get numbers and a plan in place. And that, of course, the site engineer is going to cost some money to be able to do that. Um, but you need that plan regardless whether you go through a consultant to help do that, who would then help you get a site engineer to do it, or you'd use a site engineer directly. And you sort of need to prepare the site and then put the stuff on it. And we don't need to have... Um, you know, multiple bids for that. A couple of them are usually good to get an idea of estimates so that we can price the thing out and then it would go out for bid as you would normally do um, once the thing's approved and we have the funds allocated. Okay, so we need to go through that process even to hire a site engineer? Uh, no, well, it depends. We'd have to get an idea of what a site engineer would cost right. and then that will depend based on the pressure. procurement um, okay. about whether we would have to bid that out or whether we can use reasonable what's the term reasonable uh it's a reasonable business, business thank you reasonable business practices to uh just hire someone but so I, d I did get a couple of names so we can figure out potentially we can use what joe drew up for us a couple of years ago because i still have a copy of that to give to the site engineer so they can have a general outlay mm -hmm. to know how big of an area that they need to look yeah. at for engineering sake we also going to potentially ask them to look at our septic. Well, I was, I was going to, I'm going to ask about that. So, do do we have, um, as part of running around pulling together all sorts of documents for the water treatment, do we have at hand copies of what's supposedly out here? I have stuff on file. Okay. Um, it's older, but well, it should still be fairly accurate. It should shouldn't have changed. Should have moved. <laughs> I hope not, uh, unless, uh, no, but that, that will be something that the site engineer, of course, will, will end up needing. So that if we come upon that, that wouldn't be a bad thing to, uh, bad thing to have. Okay. Anything else on that? That's all. Okay. Um, on to standing committees. Anything for administrative? No. Negotiations, I know. Nothing. Nothing with Union 31 since last time. We're looking for something over the summertime so okay. that we can vote our bids. Yeah. On oh, the yeah. August 1st area. Okay. I just want to Maybe make sure we can host them on the 23rd. At the closeout? I will see if that's a possibility. <coughs> okay. For, the, um, for July? I think we're meeting this. We're meeting the 16th, 16th. I think. We already have it established. I think so. For the Union 31? No, no. no I mean, I, I, our closeout, I think, is early. Our closeout will be the 16th because we need to meet with the tongue's needs to. Oh, we have it on here as the 23rd, but I think it's the 16th. Yeah, it's the 16th. Yep. No, I, I see where you're getting the 23rd. Yeah. No, it's 
earlier. Yeah, the 60s. Uh, any update from PAC? Well, we met um, on the 21st. Um, there wasn't really anything pressing. Um, I, I mean, if, if people aren't aware of the, of the PAC, it's basically another school committee. So you, you, pretty, you pretty much do everything that all the other committees do. So I, I don't, I'm not going to go through the whole yep. sheet. Um, but they did uh, finalize the uh, paraprofessionals contract. It's a three-year contract. Um, I believe it was two, 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 two for the three years. Um, the professional staff wants to open up negotiations soon. Um, they're going to talk to them and kind of, kind of do the same thing we did with ours. You know, just like a little uh, meet and greet, kind of get the how we want to have the meeting go about. So um, we didn't. Um, we didn't say yes or no yet. So and this is outside of the normal? Well, yeah, because they usually, what they do is they they don't do it the way we do it. Okay. As far as, um, at, at a, you know, at a table together. Yeah. It's kind of like they go into one room, they go in another room, they keep coming back and forth, that kind of a deal. So we wanted to try to make it a little bit more friendlier. I guess. But I mean, is this the normal time that they would be up for contract? Yeah. Just okay. Yeah. Yes, I thought you meant the normal process. Yeah. Why they why they're not really committing to it because they they want to have a more open dialogue instead of yeah. coming in and out of rooms. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't think you need to say more than that. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> Discuss discussion is good, and if you can't get anywhere, then. We can each go to their rooms. Yeah. You know. <laughs> we vote on the budget. Um, <laughs> Read into that as you want. All right. Yeah, we won't meet again until October. Okay. All right. Uh, policy, I believe we had our fill of that, even though I understand that there's more coming at some there point, is, but we're not listening and we'll wait till that <laughs> shows up and is an imperative after going through 140 mm -hmm. or whatever it was. Felt like 300. Uh, anything else in capital improvement? Maybe we should talk. Uh, where are you with the phones? I was going to mention that in my report. Um, oh. Steve Pillow was able to get us back up and running. Um, we have. How much duct tape did you use? Uh, there was no duct tape used, no. John, I assure you. Um, essentially, we have the skeleton of what the new system is going to look like in place right now. He was able to get the company to work with us so that we could at least have some kind of communication in the building. So the old system died? It is gone. Done? And it is okay. dead and when, I st when Steve... The smell of burning transistors and stuff? Uh, exactly. Yes, okay. Steve, he's got a good sense of humor, but even he <laughs> laughed when he got that thing off the wall. And he, said, this is, he pulled out a three and a half inch floppy disk. He said, this is what has been running your phone for the last 20 something years. He said, this is an antique. So he, he was very impressed with the whole thing, let's put it that way. Um, but that is no longer here, it is scrap. There was nothing that could be done with it. Um, so like I said, the, what's in place right now is the skeleton. It, it, had, it got us through the end of the year. Um, it's not the system in its entirety, but it's it's working for us. So. And so, is that the goal to have that in place for start of school? Correct. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm not sure if this would be a good time, John, to give you an update on the roof. <coughs> yeah, I think um, this is. Habib was out. Uh, oh yeah, we need to wait for warm weather. The Thursday, second to last day of school, Thursday. <laughs> Yay. Getting that phone call. Are you available tomorrow at 9:30? Oh. <laughs> There's nothing going on in the building. Um, he got up there, took some pictures. Um, he wanted to get a better. They, they've had the drone here a few times, but he actually wanted to get up and do a physical inspection, which yeah. um, he said whatever he, his findings would be, that would be in the report. Um, I don't believe they did the thermo imaging yet. I think he wanted to get up there and kind of take a look and see what areas might he want to focus on. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the, the latest on that. And like I said, that was Thursday. All right. And so for folks uh, viewing, uh, this is part of a roof assessment that we're doing in order to get a better understanding from a capital planning perspective of what will be a big expense regardless. Um, and so we'd like to have an idea, is that an expense we need to worry about in three years, five years, eight years, ten years? 
and get that as part of the town's capital plan, regardless of how far out that is, because, you know, absent building police stations, it's going to be one of the next big capital expenses that the town will have to deal with in whatever time frame that is. Sure. And so we've been working with them for quite a few months now, but it's been too cold for them to do some of the work that they need to do to get us a proper assessment. So more to come on that. Okay. Legislative? Um, the state budget looks better than we could have ever hoped. Um, however, they haven't passed it yet. It's still in joint conference. So the governor um, just sent a continuing resolution to the House to uh, fund the state's bills between now and when they finally settle the bill. As you know, the state budget ends on June 30th, which is rapidly approaching. So that will carry us through until we have the full budget finally voted. And I noticed that I noticed the number. I I didn't have context from the last meeting, the um, circuit breaker. So is that up quite a bit, or? So circuit breaker was one of the things that uh, Mass Association of School Committees pushed extremely hard um, for the legislature to fully fund. Now, fully funding circuit breaker means um, we get eighty percent of four times our regular tuition rate per student. So it's an extraordinary case of out-of-district placements where we have students who are costing the district um, an exponential amount of money um, to service. We will now receive back the full statutory amount that the state can give us under circuit breaker for next year. Um, but again, we're getting paid a year after we service those students. Mm -hmm. So the dollars won't come until next fiscal year, but it's supposedly paying us back for this fiscal year, is the way it's written. It's great news. Sometimes okay. circuit breaker goes as low as the mid-50s. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been hovering around the low 70s for a few years. This looks like the first time in a while it's going to be very close to 80%. And I heard there's a, isn't there a bunch of discussion running around about the overall special ed funding again and all that, but that's clearly not to do with this budget. So it's the foundation budget yeah. was conceived back in 1992, 1993 with ed reform and has not been updated since then. So we're still working on a formula that's now 25 years old. This to say 25 years old. Um, there was a committee. It's old as the old phones. Uh, um, there was a committee um, that had members of the House of Representatives and the State Senate as long as executive branch members and people from education called the Foundation Budget Review Commission that came up with found findings three years ago but had to change the formula and update it. Um, this current bill that will become the budget for next year does have some of those recommendations built into it. So that might be where you heard some okay. of that. They are trying to address um, some of the failings that we have in the current formula for Chapter 7. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe we had any si single signature warrants over the period, so I didn't sign any, so. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Benito. Thank you very much. Um, this is probably the shortest report that I'll give all year long. Um, we finished out the school year with 204 students enrolled. Um, it was a great end to the year. Um, the only other important dates that will be happening in July. Obviously, July 4th is Independence Day. And July 23rd, we will have our next school committee meeting here at 5 o'clock. No, I think that's the 16th. Yes, yeah, the 16th. I'm sorry. Yep. And then, uh, since, we had, since we have enrollment up here, any word of where we're at for kindergarten for next kindergarten year? Kindergarten looks like just around 32, 33. Okay. So a little up from... A lot from where we finished the year. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't believe we have an update in, from CASA since we don't have a CASA person yet, so we're going to sort that out. Uh, Christine? Oh, being fast. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> in your package tonight, you'll see your financial. I uh, imagine we're at the end of the year where we have pretty successfully gotten through the year. Um, We've had a few bumps this year along the way. Some of those might include the generator. <laughs> the financial slate you're looking at tonight, we have made all the changes that happened to town meeting. Those are all implemented in our budget. The town clerk was kind enough to get everything to me so that we could get it in there and get it down there on time. 
Um, another one of the areas where we've had a little bump in the road is when the tuition reimbursement for this year, but we've increased that line for next year. Um, and my notes are a little messed up today. <laughs> Uh, as you go with the financial, um, you'll see there are a few areas of concern with um, some of our payroll accounts. You'll see some small deficits there. What's happened is last year was a negotiate. Well, this was, was a negotiation year when we were budgeting. So all the increases I budget under this payroll line, the main teaching line. So you'll see there's a surplus there, where you might find there are some smaller deficits throughout the budget when you get to some of the other categories. I just wanted to bring that to your attention that that was just based on how we bu were budgeting during that year. There is a deficit in this custodial line, and that's really overtime over our weather events from last spring through the winter. Special education, we have a surplus in contracted services. We have a surplus in transportation. And then we have a small deficit in tuition, but we're gonna make it through the year. We're also gonna be able to have some funds in our circuit breaker account to bring us into next year, so that's all good news. The auto district vocation, which is on the very last page, we still have a surplus of $11,346 that we will be returning to the town. And that includes, after all the transfers have been made, that we did at town meeting. We made $95,000 worth of transfers at the um, town meeting. And so, we will so, so do these do these numbers reflect both in special ed and, and, and there, the transfers are already yes, come through? Yes, all so the anything transfers extra is, is, is a little extra. It's going back to the town, yeah. Unexpected. Yeah. Right. Um, that's the right that's way. The that's the update. Good. And we're going to make it through to our closeout meeting on July 16th, and we'll be okay. Are there any questions? Okay. If you have any, let me know. Great. Thanks. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. Okay. okay. You're on deck. So we completed our education stability review um, in uh, probably late May, it was due on June 1st. It's the first time we've completed an educational stability review. And so working with the liaisons, and Peter is the um, district liaison for, for Clinton, and with Christine, who helped me with transportation information, we looked at the ways in which we are um, meeting the state regulations for homelessness, students in foster care, and military-involved students. And um, in some areas, uh, we needed to create documentation to, to prove our uh, compliance with those um, state regulations and, and put some things into place if we didn't have them in place to try to meet those expectations. There are two areas that I think that we will need to uh, continue to work on. Uh, the first is policy, which we had mentioned before, uh, the idea that there will be most likely a recommendation um, from MASC regarding um, a new policy for military-involved children and students in foster care. Mm -hmm. um, but until those recommendations are made, we probably won't be implementing a policy, I don't foresee, um, until those come along and then, and then we'll, we'll discuss those issues. So that could be um, something that um, the state comes back to us uh, encouraging us to do. And the other thing is um, providing training for homelessness, foster care, and military involved students in terms of educating our staff about those uh, regulatory requirements. That's not something we have done in the past. That's something we've done with select staff, but not the entire staff. And so one thing we're uncertain about is whether or not this needs to become a mandatory training, like other mandatory trainings that the principals take care of at the beginning of the year. So um, we're we're a little bit uncertain about that, but we're ready uh, should that should that be um, something that we need to do. And then uh, we will be offering studying skillful teaching uh, for our educators this summer that's on site. Um, and this is a, a contractual requirement for all of our teachers within the first three years. And so um, we're happy to announce that we'll have an on-site course that will start in August and will continue into the fall with some after-school sessions. We're really happy that um, we have been approved for the sheltered English immersion course on site here in Silver Lake, um, which will help in terms of making it a little bit more convenient for teachers to take that uh, course. It's a, it's a big commitment to the number of classes and the number of hours that teachers must participate if they are a uh, instructor of a core um, subject matter or grade level teacher for students who are English language learners. And so teachers have a year um, from the time that an English language learner enters their classroom to complete that course. And so we're gonna have that on site next year. Um, and then also in your packet, you also have the grant and donations report. 
on the first page of that packet you'll find um, grant and donation summaries for the 2017-2018 school year. The first page is a comparison of the state and federal grant allocations over the past 13 years and you will notice a peak in grants in the 2011 school year mm. and over the past seven years you'll see uh, a decline in grant wow. funding. That's not um, unusual in, in terms of um, that's common across the state. There we're half of what we were at the peak. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then on page two, you can see specific allocations for each of the state and federal allocations, as well as we've added a few categories here, so that's why the numbers are not the same as the first page. We added REAP, E-Rate, and the Kingston Foundation for Education appears here, which doesn't appear on the first page. Um, and to the right, you'll find the primary uses for the grants. We've tried to summarize them succinctly to get a general idea. You may remember um, uh, Special Education Grant 274. You may re remember Special Education Early Childhood Grant 298. And you rem may remember Academic Support Grant 625. Those are no longer, um, those no longer appear on our grant allocation sheets. And um, neither do the full-day kindergarten grants that some uh, school systems benefited from in the past, those those are gone. Those the are the ones they pulled up from like the rest of the year. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had to deal with, we'll be with, done with the aids. Right. Yep. So the final pages of the packet highlight the many donations and outside grants that teachers and staff have been awarded this year and they are listed by school so you can find um, you can find Dennett in here. PTO support is not included in this report, but it is evident that our teachers are working to supplement the funding through outside resources. So um, and you can get a sense of uh, the, the types of um, things that they're looking for, the products and services, but also the different types of outreach that they have been using to try to get those types of supplemental or enrichment materials and sometimes even um, supplies. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Okay. Yeah, I, I just I was just wondering. Um, I noticed that on, under Halifax Elementary in Kingston, mm -hmm. there were two pretty sizable donations from Life Touch Studios, mm -hmm. but it didn't show that for Dennett. And again, um, I, re I rely on what is reported to me from the teachers. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, Mr. Vidino. We Vidino? received money from Life Touch as well. I didn't consider it a donation. This is how I interpret that. Okay. That's Thank good you. to know. Good question. Thank you. Okay. So it also helps to be able to see what other people are including so that next year. You know, and right. I did share this with the building principals as well, so they have a better sense of the types of things that, that the other schools are claiming in this kind of report. Okay. Well, thank you. Good. All right. On to your secondary role for yes. today. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Superintendent Blackwood has left us with a draft school calendar um, for discussion and vote tonight. Um, and she has gone over the, the calendar in the past, but I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about the placement of certain days or... No. I'll make the motion to accept the calendar as proposed. And we have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. And then the second um, item from Superintendent Blackwood is the draft of the Civil Lake Regional School District and Superintendency Union 31 school year meeting schedule for discussion and vote. And again, um, the idea here was to um, try to follow a pattern similar to old Rochester Regional School Committee meetings um, in, the, in the sense of trying to go every six weeks but maintaining uh, certain months where we know that we're very budget heavy and, right. and need and require meetings that are more frequent than every six weeks yeah so you know we we have a break but then you're going pretty much january february march april right in a row because mm -hmm. of the budget time so she's also hoping for a vote on this tonight as well 
I'll make a motion to accept the 2018-2019 uh, school year meeting schedule. We have a sec. Printed. We have a second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And then the last item is reorganization um, for the uh, remaining subcommittees for 2018-2019. Okay. So we are starting with Union 31 on the list, a, ch a chairperson. Well, I'm automatic, right? I don't get a choice, mm -hmm. I believe. Chair is always on that, so. Mike is the chair of Union 31 as of right now. I know they have to yeah. vote it again, but. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll stay on. Well, I guess before we go any further, should mm -hmm. we should we talk about PAC? Is, is that is that one that is that, yeah, that that we probably should talk about first, and then we can sort out the rest, which are intermittent committees. You know, PAC has a regular mm -hmm. commitment. Uh, granted, as you said, not a, there isn't a meeting until October, but. Yeah. And they meet once a month. So, um, I mean, I, I, well, not everybody knows probably that, that, that I uh, took Maureen's spot on Silver Lake right. Regional. Um, so, um, I, I, do like the patch, um, but it's it's another it's another monthly meeting that um, I might not be able to fully commit. Right. Um, because my first commitment is to put it in. So like now at this point for the for the next year. Right. And and Jill, for your benefit. Mm hmm. This Jill. Okay. Um, uh, I knew that was going to come up tonight. I knew it was going to come up tonight. I have a group at work, and there's my boss is John, I'm John, and one of my colleagues is John. It's, it's not a good thing. Um, I feel like I'm back in high school. Um, so, like, the sick leave bank, we've never met in the four and a half years that I've been doing this. Okay. Uh, Casselier is on... Um, I mean, there's a couple different ways to handle that. One is to try and attend CASA meetings. The other is to just have a con con have a connection with someone from CASA ahead of the meeting to be able to bring back any updates. Policy, we go for a long while without meeting, and then we just went through a deluge. Um, but that was pretty uncommon. I mean, we have I've never seen us go through that many policies mm. that was in, unusual. One, in one fell swoop. So typically, it's a meeting go through them, maybe a follow-up, and then it comes before here. Um, building grounds, capital expenditure, it, it's rare that we meet for that. We deal with most of the stuff within the committee, but it, it could. Uh, negotiating uh, only comes up um, either it's something off-cycle, but we're, we're due not this year, but the following year um, for that. Um, What's bylaw? The bylaws are our only bylaws. Okay. Within the union and right. Plimpton itself. But we don't, we don't do, well, it's a committee of one. <laughs> 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 um, and then administrative review is, that's, that's busy, is that, that's annual, right? Uh, yes. We do, we, with um, Joy's. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's every, every, every year. And then, but that sort of, does, you're not meeting regularly, you're meeting regularly at, at that time yeah, of year. Time, yeah. Right, when you're, when you're doing the review and correlating and pulling that all together. And then, legislative, so. And when the contracts come up too for, okay. for her, her staff too. Right, okay. Um, so. But that's typically what, in the spring? Winter, spring? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So hopefully that gives some background. Um, 
Stephanie uh, isn't isn't here, but that's her mistake. Um, <laughs> we can always revisit if we need to, but I, um, but so PAC, uh, so you're now on yet another school committee. Um, PAC, I cannot do because they do have authority over the retirement fund for the teachers, which is a prohibition from my work that I can't have technically oversight of outside funds where you could pick investment advisors. So that's a problem there. So we are going to need to cover PAC, and then the rest of it, I think, will fall into place. So. How do you feel about PAC? <laughs> 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 I mean, I'll step in where, wherever is needed. If there's obviously going to be a learning curve for me, but I'm, I'm happy to I'm happy to step in and, and do my learning um, on the job if that's if that's needed. And you'll have a little bit a uh, little bit more experience before that first October meeting because again, you do a lot of the same stuff here. You do there. Um, it's just a slightly different focus because they're not. You know, you're not dealing with the day-to-day -day sort of piece. Three, five, yeah, because you stepped in with into it last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you're willing to do that, we'll be kind on the other stuff. Okay. Thank you. You're most welcome. <laughs> and don't forget, I did take over from my new policy that you took back so we can update that. Okay. Try as well. All right, so policy. I'm happy to stay on policy. Um, and Jason, you're, you're fine with staying on there. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I took over from Mike. Yeah. He took over from Got me. It. Okay. We just didn't update it on the okay. chart. So, Mike, why don't I, since we took you off pack, why don't I just see where else? Do you want to stay on administrative review? Sure. Is that good? Yeah. And do you want to stay on negotiating? Sure. Okay, and I'm happy to do that as well. Actually, I think that's another one where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I don't think I have a choice. So. <laughs> okay. Um, but um, we need uh, an alternate though for. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to pick off where we can pick off, and then we can sort out the rest. I'd leave the sick leave bank as is. I think that's fine. I don't think Stephanie would have a problem with that. Um, and hopefully, we have no need to ever meet. Um, uh, so what does that leave us with? Building and grounds, capital. And then some alternates. Mm-hmm. And CASA. Yeah. Let's, let's, um, Let's put Stephanie on CASA, and then we can talk about it at our next meeting, if that's not okay with her. I'm just trying to spread out the regular stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, Jill, do you have an interest in being an alternate? We have policy and... Um, negotiating um, and then the alternate really I mean they can attend but they don't need to unless we have an issue that like usually neither of the other two people can attend and then we need to get quorum sure. so Whichever one is more helpful. any do you want anything else are you good yeah, with your two we've pretty much filled it up at this point. well it's just the two alternates I didn't know if you wanted one of them there's policy and negotiating well I am on you are on policy, so you can't be the. So mm -hmm. you are now on policy for an alternate. Okay. And go. 
Thank you. It's my lucky day. Yeah, we'll just keep the carry that over. Um, and does it matter for negotiating? It's fine. I mean, we tend to schedule the meetings to make sure that the two people can be there. So, okay. And can I assume Stephanie and Jason, Union 31? Uh, Jason as the alternate? Yep. Yeah, why don't we? Yep. Okay. A bit like a root canal, but <laughs> okay. Um, did you want to do executive session? Okay. Uh, anything else that anyone wants to bring up before we move this along? No. Okay. I'd entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn move into executive session for the purposes of discussing safety and security. Not to return to a regular session. Except to adjourn. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you and have a good evening. <laughs>